Hi guys, welcome to the video. This is my solo flawless guide on how to complete the Prophecy Dungeon flawlessly solo on the Warlock. So as you can see, I'm going to be using... <clears throat> now, I'll be using this after the first boss. I'll be using Voidwalker Bottom Tree, so I'll be using Devour. Weather Horde and Cartesian Coordinate I'll be using for the whole run. Threaded Needle after the first encounter, but I'll be using Fallen Guillotine on the first encounter. So uh, as you can see here, Devour is going to be your saving grace through that whole thing. But we will be starting off with Top Tree. Then we'll be moving to Well for the first boss. We are going to be doing the skip. A little bit more difficult now on the Warlock than it used to be, but still doable. The relevant... I've got all the relevant mods on. Linear Fusion Rifle, Scavenger and Finder. Fusion Rifle, Scavenger and Finder. I've went with high energy fire. I've also went with fusion rifle reserves. Just really going to help at the boss. And obviously, uh, this season's mod, which is like super strong, is the damage dealing mod for this season. The, uh, the artifact mod, uh, particle deconstruction. So we'll be using that because obviously that gives you a massive boost. Was it 40% damage boost? 30% uh, damage boost on your fusion rifles and the Cartesian coordinate is just, I, I've spoke about it on Twitter, I've spoke about it in previous videos, uh, I used it quite extensively in my Hunter Solo, if you haven't seen that, check the channel out, the Hunter Solo was one of the last videos I made, it is the fusion rifle at this moment in time I believe. So the way you do the skip is jump up into this pipe, sword about two thirds of the way up to about here. Just do a single jump, don't boost, and call your Spyro. Now, you'll see I'm going to go right here. You don't make it up the right-hand side. You can see, you just jump away. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to sword all the way around to the left, and when I get as high up as I can, I'm going to sword sword up. Then I'm going to do the Icarus dash. Now, you only get one Icarus dash now on the Warlock. And then I sword onto the platform. And that is how you get up here on the Warlock. Now, I'm going to be changing to Well of Radiance. Now, there were some changes recently to Well of Radiance. It doesn't do, doesn't give you the protection or the damage that it used to. So, for the first time ever on Well of Radiance, this isn't a one phase. I normally one phase on Well of Radiance. So, you'll see what I've done is I've changed the, I've changed the blade type. I took it off Jagged Edge and I put it onto the bottom blade type, which gave me six more sword ammo. And then we start it off. Come over here, put a well down, drop drop a drop the the grenade that always uh, the name of always the weather horde always eludes me the name of that because I just never used it for so long. Uh, drop that down and then use your fusion rifle to finish off the knight. The other knight will come from behind, so you can get your dark moats immediately. Now I think if I'm correct, I don't get both of the dark. Uh, fonts first time. I do get both the light ones, I believe. And and the way you get both of them is you jump up in between them and slam when you're higher than the highest font of light. So, you kind of just rinse and repeat. I think I've spoke a lot about this in previous videos, but just for anybody that hasn't seen the other runs, you produce the relevant fonts. You see, you've got two dark and two light when you come into this area. You produce those fonts uh, by being in the relevant shade. Once you're in the dark and you kill a knight that's in the dark, you'll produce dark motes. Once you pick it, each enemy drops, each of the knights drops three, you need five to produce an overall font of light. You see how I'm just going to kill him, get him out of the way. Uh, you need five to produce a singular mote of light, and then you can slam and get rid of one of these uh, pillars of light. Now we're going to go over to the other side, because I want to be directly in, above. I just got rid of it there, but I wanted to be directly in the middle. I don't actually know if I, if I got both of them. If I did, then it just goes to show sometimes it's, it's better just winging it. But the idea is to jump up in between uh, both the pillars, both your light pillars or dark pillars, depending on what font you've got. Yep, it looks like I've got both the light and slam when you're above the highest one, but in the middle of both of them. And you'll take both the pillars out. So now what we need is we need a dock. You can see they're right above us. So, just a quick recap, because this all of this happens really frenetically. The outside areas you can see me, me using. 
that is your safest bet, right? You want to try and clear as many of the the ads as you can before going for any of the 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 moats. Uh, if you take out, and you see here, we're going to do damage here. We've got three knights up. Those knights will stay for a little bit. As you can see, it's really glitchy. Has been really glitchy for me for a while. And that's why I didn't one phase the boss. Because he just disappeared completely. So what I'm trying to do, while he's, while, while we've got him here, while we've got him in the well, any ads coming in tethering him, won't, they won't be able to tether him. They won't be able to stop us damaging him. I found it increasingly uh, glitchy when I was doing this, so I'm just I'm just trying to get as much damage on them as I can with different things, and I I almost got them, but it would have it was that uh, start where he kind of ran away. See here, he's not got a lot left. I would have one faced him. That is why, because of the glitch. Because he just teleported away at the start. So, rinse and repeat. Sometimes if you have to go through a second damage phase, sometimes what you get is you get three light, one dark, or three dark, one light. We, we lucked out here. We got the dark and the light almost exactly as we had them at the start. So, your Cartesian will absolutely destroy these knights. So, we've picked up a dark, so I need to kill another knight in the dark. It will absolutely ruin them. There we go. We've got the, the next one. Now, if you find that you're getting obliterated by the knights, what you can do, or, or a, a way to do it, is to just always leave one up. Now, I, I knew I didn't think I was going to get... I didn't think I was going to get the double slam, because trying to go a bit faster now, because, because of what happened with the one phase in the first one, if, if you're if you're getting destroyed by the knights, what you can do is kill the first two, just leave one up. Because if you kill all three of the knights, which I have done each time so far, but if confidence because I've I've done this a heap of times. Uh, if you find you're getting destroyed, just leave one knight up. Kill two, leave one knight up, and then you won't get three knight. You won't get three brand new knights coming in uh, to ruin your day, basically. So, we're just, what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to draw enemies, I don't want them to be all bunching up in the same place, I'm trying to create space for myself, I'm trying to get that last more. Another cool thing you can do, see here I'm going to charge my grenade, If you, with, with, with this uh, subclass what you can do is you can charge your grenade and throw it in front of you and it gives you an overshield. Once you've got a full moat of light, a full moat, you cannot, do not, you can, but don't. Don't, uh, I don't know why I've done that, because now I've still got a, uh, a, a full light to get. I thought that was the last one for some reason. Uh, you can pick up one of the moats, and you can run around. Uh, you can run around, and you can... The moats would last for a set amount of time. So it just gives you time. It just gives you time to... Uh, you know... Once you've got three moats, they only last for a certain amount of time. So it gives you time to run about. Uh, assess the situation. Take some ads out. And then come back. Refresh the timer by picking another one of the moats of the three that you produced. There we go. Now I've got an overshield. I'm going to take this last night out. And there we go, we've got a full moat. Now, as I say, if that hadn't happened with with them to start with, we, it would have been a one phase. So you can actually one phase this pretty easily, as long as he doesn't do what he done there. Now you see there's a load of ads. I'm going to just do a big slam, see if I can kill any of them with the bark, because the, the well will actually kill ads if you slam on top of them. As you can see, it took nothing to kill him. Now I'm going to change the threaded needle. So the the idea with the warlock, especially for that first encounter, is use the outsides as your cover. Run around the outsides. If you are getting hit, remember you've got your well, which you can use as, unless you've got a full moat font of light, a full moat of light to slam. If you don't, if you've only got three or four or whatever, 
Then you can put your ref down, but do not put your ref down if you've got a full mort because it will just get rid of them. And obviously, while you've got a full mort, you can you can use your grenade. You can charge your grenade and throw it in front of you to get uh, to get an overshield. Use the outside as your cover. Jump up when you get a, a, a mort of light. Jump up between the two pillars of light that you want to, to extinguish, and slam it when you're in the middle of both but higher than the highest one. There'll be one higher than the other one. Rinse and repeat, and then do damage. Remember, uh, use your, your fusion rifle and your sword. Don't just fusion rifle or sword. Double down on the damage. And that's the first section. So as you can see, we've changed now to Devour. Now this is called Heaven and Hell. So the idea is, we're going to go and get the secret chest. The idea is, there are there are going to be there's only one here at the moment, but there are going to be three sets of three blights. To clear this area, you have to get rid of the blights. Once you get rid of one set of blights, Toll and Soul will be in the middle. Once you run past it, it will go in the direction of the next set of form, uh, blights. Now this was my first clear of this week, so I will be getting all the rewards. It was actually the first time I'd done it this week, so... Something I'm really bad at doing is having my recording equipment on at all times. And there's lots of flawless runs I've done. Lots of maybe maybe stuff that people would think would have been cool. Definitely would have made good guides or whatever that I forget to record. Because I don't have my recording equipment on at all times. So this, this was born from having my recording equipment up. I have flawless the prophecy a few times and just haven't had... Haven't recorded the run, so... I, I'd said before I want to do a guide on each because because the weapons are good this season you know I want to make a guide on each of the characters now I do get contacting Destiny servers here twice I, I recorded this so this will give you guys an idea of when I done it I recorded it during the maintenance where there was no downtime uh, I'm trying to think when that was Wednesday and that, that, that was literally what happened but but if anybody's read my, my tweet or what I put on YouTube, there was another really kind of... It's never happened to me before, but there was another really kind of crazy thing that happened uh, at the boss. You'll, you'll, I'm not going to say much more about it. I'll wait. It's, I've, never seen, I've never seen anything like this before. So it, you'll see it when we get there. So these are the Blights. Now, there's, there's always three kind of boss... Uh, ads, if you like, three mini kind of elites. Elites, they're not bosses. There are three elites. Now, with these, you can either get. I'm trying to think what you can get. You can get those uh, solar solar taking hive uh, uh, fallen captains. You can get hobgoblin snipers. You can get cabal. Uh, there's, I think, there's four different types, four or five different types. Regardless, once you kill them. All you're dealing with then is take and throw. So after they're dead, I normally... You don't have to kill all the adds. You really just have to get rid of the blights. I kill the adds. It's... I don't know what it is. I don't know why I do it. I know all I've got to do is kill these blights. Uh, you, we're running Devour, so I have a super. Uh, but the grenade will give me health back on kills. It gives me 10 seconds. So once I pop proc Devour by either eating my grenade, getting a melee kill, or using my super and getting a kill with a super... Uh, I've got 10 seconds to get another kill. If you eat your grenade, it takes 5 kills roughly to get your grenade back. So in here, you should have a grenade most of the time. I'm just trying to... I always come in and get rid of the snipers first, then I look for the bigger ads. And there they are, there's, there's all the big ads just over to the left. Just put a weather horde down on top of them. Now the thing I hate about these blights doesn't happen all the time, but sometimes it does. The, sometimes the big ads will kind of just run around the edge of the blight, so they're not inside it, and they're not outside it. Either way, you can't hit them. And it, it does annoy me a little bit. You will take damage from inside the blight, but it's it's negligible. It's, 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 you'll see there. And, he, and, and, and as you would have seen, I got my health back from killing the blight. It didn't recharge my... It didn't recharge my Devour, but Devour counted it as a kill. 
it's kind of strange that the timer didn't reset the timer accidentally <laughs> the weather hood's not going to do much to it I accidentally have my weather hoard out so now we look for i must have you know uh i must have went too far past it where are you tolan there you are now tolan will guide us to the next set of blights which is just here and as i say three sets of three and then you're out here it's a nice little area if you i mean there's a the hidden chests in this area will give you stuff random rolls of things you've already had so if you're looking for something specific then sometimes you can just get it out of that chest now i've, I've used my i've used my super because we're going to rally a flag at the hexahedron room which is coming up next uh again th there's no there'll be other ways to do this there'll be better weapons i am in no way shape fashion or form saying that this is the only or the greatest way this is just the most repeatable way I find, and it's what I do. I put out videos and guides for the most repeatable way. I don't do Hollywood runs, and I don't do spectacle runs that won't work every time. I try and do, put out stuff that works every time. And ever since, I had a lot of internet issues and a lot of personal issues. Uh, that makes it sound real ominous, but it was just stuff that was going on at the time. I couldn't actually make the guide on the prophecy when it first came out. Because one of the things that happened was I lost my internet for two months. Um, my network went down and, and that was it. I just I had no internet. So I couldn't actually play Destiny. So I couldn't get in and make a guide on these. So I've only ever done, I think I've done like two, may only have been one Warlock guide up to now. So this is the Warlock guide. I've already done a Hunter guide, as I said. It's on the channel. I will put a link in the in the description to that. And hopefully I'll get a Titan run done next week. But that is that is this section over with. The next section starts with the Hexahedron. So, here we are at the Hexahedron room. This room is basically a cube. And each side of the cube, there are six sides, is a different floor of the room that you can spawn into. So it's always be the same cube. It will just turn to represent. It will look different because the floor will be different. The way this room kind of works is you've got obviously you've got to produce dark or light motes dependent on which pillar you need to extinguish. How you find out which pillar you need to slam your moat on is dictated by which side of the room Toland's soul is on. So if he's on the left hand side and the pillar of light in front of his little white orb is dark, you need to produce dark motes. And you do that, as we've already spoke about, by killing the knights while you're in the dark. And you'll see on the bottom left-hand corner of your screen when you're actually in play, you will see that uh, you'll either have a dark wisp or a light wisp. And that tells you which shade you're in. Now, if Toland is on the ceiling... Now, I'm taking this from comments. I heard this once before. I think I tried it, but I'm not sure it actually worked. But this is what I've been told. I, I actually messed it up here, so I can't even confirm it works. But enough people told me that I'm I'm inclined to believe it. If Toland is on the ceiling, you, you see that dark cube above us? One of the sides of that cube will have a symbol that isn't lit up. That's the side you have to slam the moats on. So if he's on... If he's facing, if, if that side that isn't lit up, if it's facing this dark, this light font here, we would be slamming on that. But Tolan's soul was above this pillar of light. So I needed to produce dark, dark motes and slam them there. Now, this is where Devour really starts to, you know, pay its way. See there? As soon as I drop into the next room, what I will normally do is spin round and look at all four circles that are on the walls, the sides, to see if Toland's soul's there, and it tells me which font I need to need to slam on. So I'm just going to put my rift down, and rather than use my grenade, I'm just looking to see where there's Toland's soul there, so it's light motes we need. I'll just get rid of that, and now, it, so the, the other way this works, when, when you when you first start the, any room, you're going to get, as you've seen, you'll get a wave of acolytes. The acolytes are okay, they're not, they're not too dangerous, it's the dangerous part are the acolyte's eyes. They basically produce these little turrets. They they can really focus fire you. 
So you'll get two waves of those. They'll be, be between three and four in each wave, but you get these two snipers. When you take out a sniper, imagine it's kind of like a symbiotic relationship. You, you start with two snipers. Every time you kill a sniper, you'll get a knight. When you kill the knight, you'll get the sniper back. So there'll never be a time you don't have one set of them in here. So if you kill bo both the snipers, you'll get both both the knights. So I put a, I put a, well, a, a rift down. Now as I've said before, and I hope you remember I said this before, you can't put down your rift if you have a moat. You see there, he's on the ceiling. So now I'm going to just do a little lap and find out which side I need to slam on. There we go, it's not lit there, so I need light moats. I actually slam in the wrong place, but I've show, at least I've shown you guys how we do it, right? <laughs> so I'm, now I've, I've killed that sniper, we're definitely going to get a knight, right? So I've actually produced the wrong moats straight away because we needed light. So I'm going to kill these ads. Now I'm going to pop my devourer. So I've got dark, and now I've realised right there, when I turn around, I realise I've done the wrong one. So now, I know I'm going to go round. I'm, I know I'm going to have to just slam. I could, I could have just slammed them outside and not bothered about, uh, not bothered about actually slamming them on a dock. I could have just got rid of them by just you can, you can get rid of if you picked up the wrong moats, you can just slam anywhere. Just hold right trigger and get rid of them. As long as you're not on a plate. And then go for the ones you need. What happens now is I go back a room. So I'll spin round. There we go. We need light moats. So that is how you do it pro How you do it properly is exactly the way I've just told you. If he's on the ceiling, look for the side where there are there are uh, no, uh, no symbol. And you're slamming on that side. So now we know we need light moats. So I'll take out that sniper. Take out that sniper. Now I'll go over here. You see that wisp on my super bar? Tells me it's like white, like a white wisp. That's telling me I was in the light there. And as you see, I produce light motes. And same here. There we go. And that, that's basically how you do this room. My, my suggestion, if you were... I, I actually... I was a bit loose with this because I was just doing it on my own time. I would suggest when you drop down here, right, we need dark motes. I, I, I would pop your grenade. There we go. Now, as soon as I've put that weather horde down, I am going to kill some of those enemies and I'll keep getting my health back. So even though the snipers are hitting me, I'm, I'm going to get my health. Now he's right there, so now he's going to have to die. I've got to think there's the other sniper. He dies. Let's have a look. Dark moats. Perfect. So we kill these guys. You can see there. When, for anybody that's not sure how Devour works. So you can proc Devour three different ways. By consuming your grenade, which is my preferred. That's my preferred method. So you can either consume your grenade. Get a charged melee kill. Right? So you need to have your melee. As you can see on the screen, I've got mine. Or your super. So if you use your super, you will get a chart, you will get Devour. It takes roughly, now you can count here, well you might be able to count here, right? So there's three, there's four ads there. The eyes count as well. And there you go. I've got my grenade back. And that's, it's roughly five kills. It's roughly five kills once once you've got Devour, you get 10 seconds of Devour. So we're just going to make sure. There we go. I'm in the dark now. You get 10 seconds. Once you proc Devour, you get 10 seconds to get a kill. And then when you get a kill, you reset the timer. So it's 10 seconds every time. So as you can see here, this is where I needed to slam it. That was the side of the cube. Tolem was on, on, on the... Tolem was on the ceiling. So that was the side of the cube I needed to slam on. Easy money. No. When you get to this room, if there are no fonts here, then that tells you you're in the boss room. If there are no pillars of light, you are then in the boss room. So there's the first boss. I always put my super on the first boss. Now we're going to use the fusion on the second boss. Put my rift down. 
destroyed. Put a grenade there, let all the ads run through it. And there you go. That is how you do the hexahedron room. Pop your grenade so you get devour at the start of each room. There are enough kills, you need five kills to get your grenade back. Make sure you're in the right shade to produce the right moat. And if Toland is on the ceiling, it's the side of the cube that isn't doesn't have a lit up symbol. That is where you should be slamming. Really easy, there are six rooms. You need to do six rooms to get to the boss. If you slam in the wrong place, it will put you back a room, meaning you'll have to do seven, and so on and so forth. That is a hexahedron room. Now we're going to make our way across to uh, Rainbow Road, the, the the Mario Kart Rainbow Road reference. And it's basically the ribbons, right? Now, as you will probably be aware, and if you're not, I'm going to tell you, the sparrow I have on is called Always On Time. It was the Scourge of the Past exotic sparrow, and it is quite a cons it's considerably quicker than any of the other sparrows now i was going to go into my i went into my menu i was going to change my subclass to top tree dawn blade uh but i decided not to so the sparrow it's it's a lot quicker than all the other sparrows in the game meaning it's a little bit more difficult to control here i was going to go in and change but i'm pretty sure i don't have another sparrow because this is the sparrow i always use uh I would go with a true 160 because that, even though this says it's 160, it's probably closer to a 190. So what you do here is you just just be careful going around these ribbons. There are platforms you can jump down. I always sparrow. It's a little bit quicker. You see there, this thing is is a bit of an animal. It's it really it still has that forward momentum even when you're turning corners, right? Now you can see there. Luckily, uh, because because there's three different pathways down here, I uh, I come off the sparrow on it. And there was another platform for me to land on pretty easily. So you'll see here. I actually, yeah, I, I sometimes the snipers in this game they're like uh, PC, uh, true PC snipers. They just don't miss, and and the fire rate was ridiculous. I want one of the Taken Vandal sn Sniper Marksman Scout Rifles, whatever you want to call them. I want one in the game. That thing would be crazy. Uh, I always come up here. I always make it down to this pyramid and I come up here. It just changes the way I've got the, the route I need to take. And for me, this is the quickest route. So I jump over here. And then on this platform with like the big kind of plum in the middle of it globe whatever you want to call it and then i do a huge jump big ass jump right off the edge and i land on you see my arrow as i land on that platform and then on the next platform with the plum and then i'm into this pyramid and then there's one more pyramid to go before we get to the boss now once we get out of this pyramid the next one has the secret chest in it there are two secret chests in the prophecy uh and as I say, those chests will drop you things that you've already had, but just with random rules. So I think I've said this a number of times. I, I did get a Rampage uh, Darkest before the Pulse Rifle, because the thing's mad. The amount of times I've been in Crucible, whatever, and I've just completely melted a Vex user with it. Unless they're using the single shot Linear Fusion Rifle Fire Mode. But if it's the normal Vex, this thing, this thing can compete with it quite easily. Uh... And I did get a Rampage one, but I, it didn't have high caliber. I am looking for Rampage high caliber. So down here is where your next chest is. And uh, basically that's us to the boss. Now, the boss is going to be a three phase, but you will see what I mean when I say it's, it's almost embarrassing to call it a three phase because after the second phase, he's got very little left to call it a phase. And I, I still took my time ridiculous but you'll see why because i i kind of got off put at the boss with this crazy thing that happened so that that's how you do this when you get down here some people have a problem with this even people have done this with when you drop down here there's, there's, there's three kind of pillars sticking out that you'll see them there aim yourself 
in the where I am here, but I would back up a bit. Right? You see, I'm not getting grabbed. So I kind of go forward. I'm not getting grabbed. So I go all the way back. And then jump up. And that, that's how you get up into the teleporter. And that is us. That is us at the boss. E easy work. And I will speak to you more when we get to the boss. So the boss room. The boss room is... All the principles that you've learnt so far within this prophecy dungeon are going to come into play at the boss room. So you're still going to have to produce fonts of light, base, motes of light, sorry, based on what fonts of light are in the room. You do that by killing knights when you are in the corresponding shade, light or dark. The difference is, this is now a triangle room, and there's going to be a boss in each corner shooting you. Now, it's very similar to the hexahedron room in, in regards to... Uh, Each side of the room is a different floor that you can land in. Although I think that the, the, obviously it's a, it's, a, it's a triangle. Sorry, it's not a triangle. It's a pyramid. So you've got four sections. Three constituting the walls and one on the floor. Each room is going to be set up roughly. The, the rooms are going to be different, but the, the point of the room is going to be the same. There's going to be a boss in each corner and you have to extinguish the... The pillar of light that's in front of the boss. Now, my first tip for this would be make sure you give yourself... Maybe start clearing the ads first because the, the, the pillars of light will change after a couple of seconds. Right? So clear the ads out first. You, the, now you're going to get taken scions, the ones that replicate. So uh, what, what I would suggest doing... Is, and I'm going to do it here. You see, I'm going to put on a fusion rifle re reload. It was actually a grenade launcher I wanted. But because what I'm going to do is right off the bat, you see, I'm, I'm, I'm just rallying the flag, is I'm going to put put down a weather horde in front of where each of them spawns. You see there, I took my devour grenade maybe a little bit too quickly, but we'll see. And I just put one down on top of them all. Not, not too quickly. Just make sure there's no ads. Or is, you know, try to make sure there's no ads, and then I'm going to start. See, there I've looked. I do have darks, and that's me. I've got now. There is still an ad up. I'll just get rid of him. No, I've got two. I've got my dark motes done. Once you slam, the boss will disappear, and you'll get a big taken ogre. Not too difficult to put away. Now, you can see I've got one dark in front of the next two bosses. I've got one dark and one light. So we'll just take out this guy. There we go. I've got dark. So that will be too clear. That, that, that is the point. You want to create two clear sides as fast as you can. Now I'm going to get a wave of ads in. So slam here. You want to get rid of this ogre. Don't let this ogre free roam because he, he's got a ranged attack, obviously. So I'll put that down. And this time, I'm just going to fusion rifle him, eat my grenade, and then start clearing the ads. Devour. Now, Devour is a very, very, very good subclass choice, right? The problem with Devour, it really only has one issue that I can see, is as a super... It doesn't actually do that much damage. It's not a great damage dealing super, but to be fair, I mean that's the only the only the only complaint I could level at it. To be fair, when you're using Devour, you're not using the super to be like a boss melt machine. I'm just gonna get rid of these ads here. You're using it as and and as a way of staying alive. Now, if I'm being totally honest, uh this room, that is exactly what it's about. It's survivability. That is why I've left the Titan run till last, because the Titan, in my opinion, has the hardest time staying alive. Uh, so you can see there, I've got the particle uh, deconstruction on, and I'm increasing my damage. So I'm going to put, put my super down, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my linear, take out the snipers, and then I'm going to just go forward, thanks for the boost. 
take out the next set from here and then I'm just going to move forward and keep going on at him. Make sure you stay out of the way of his darkness blast. Now you'll see where it says Vorpal Weapon. I had Vorpal propped. You'll see right next, you'll see on the screen there because I don't have Vorpal propped, you'll see uh, Dark Entropy that has a, a counter. As, it go, as you get further away from his aura, uh, as you get further away from, from, from the boss's aura, you see there it's at times 2. It can go up to times 10. But if it keeps getting higher and higher, you're too far away from him. Now, because he's going to teleport, you'll see it now going down. I'm getting cleansed because I'm, I'm back close enough to him that I'm in his aura. So, I kind of try and do that quite a bit. Is kind of get in front of him. So that I'm, I'm kind of chasing him. I used to do it a different way. What I used to do was I used to uh, I used to get right in front of him, but I would miss a couple of floors of damage. Right, and you see there we've done almost half, very close to half damage. I would have had so this is a three phase, right? But as I've already said, he's got that little on in the third phase that is kind of even though it. It does take me a little bit to kill him. It's, it's I, I could have finished him in two phases. Uh, maybe moving too far in front was the problem. But what I like to do now, as you've seen, is do damage, kill the snipers, move, move up, and I follow him. While he's on the platform, it seems like there's more there's more chances that his shots will hit pillars, meaning the darkness blast doesn't come to me. But if I get in front of him. It really, I mean, it probably sounds silly because most of the pillars is too far away to actually hit me. But it just seems to work better if if he's, uh, if I'm chasing him, it seems to work better. See there, my, it's still proccing my devour. I'm going to create light motes here. As long as I've got devour propped, I'm, I can play aggressively. And as long as there's adds up. So, so now, because I've got the linear and I need light and I know all of that's dark over there, I'll use my linear to take him out from the light. There we go. Just grab the special ammo all the way over here to the light. Slam. It's right trigger to slam. Uh, uh, that is obviously on Xbox. If you're on PlayStation, it'll be what, R3? And... Uh, whatever your fire buttons are on, on PC. Uh, I normally make a joke here, but I'm not going to about writing emails. <laughs> Always makes me laugh how PC players think that all of a sudden they're the, the master race of gaming. I think PC gaming was around first though, right? So, maybe they got a point. So, we want dark. I used my super there. And the reason I used my super is because I've got from now until at, ver at the very worst I've got from now until I get to the other side of the boss's platforms to get my super back. So I'm not in any real rush to get my super and my super doesn't really constitute that was too far away uh, my super doesn't really constitute a massive majority of my damage so it's, it's not like I've lost out on damage by doing that. So now we need... You can see in the background, the last boss is dark. I will put some... Weather Horde there. I'm just looking for where the last boss is. The last knight. There he is. So I will go here and just disintegrate him. Get my moats. And then... Now, because I've got a grenade, I can eat my grenade. Now, when I kill this, this guy here, get my health straight back. And now what I'm going to do is just, I am going to clear these ads. I don't have to. I'll just get rid of them. I'll just get rid of them because it's ammo as well. You can see my fusion rifle doesn't have a great deal of ammo. These ads keep respawning and they can be 
pretty good for getting ammunition. So I'll just, just have a look around. We've got tons of heavy. Uh, tons of heavy lying about on the floor. So again, just get reloaded. Make sure you're reloading when you go down here. Now, there is another thing you can do if you want. So I'm going to start with my heavy this time. Let's move out the way of his darkness blast. You see there, I'm accruing damage each shot. So I'll take out the two snipers and then back to him. And just put a weather horde on him. Now I'm just going to move forward to here. Take out these two snipers. And you see there, his shot hit that little block in front of him. It seems like I've got more chance of that happening if I chase him. So this time with a horde and then another one and I'm just this is where I lost another bit of damage as well we're still going to do damage to him but I lost I lost a heap of damage there and I'm losing it here so the actual chasing him seems like it's probably more worthwhile than than uh, than trying to get out in front although now I get two I get two platforms of un, you know, uninterrupted damage if I hadn't missed those two shots, maybe I'd have got them with the two phase, but... And I've got my super back. So what we'll do is put a weather horde, and now my super. You see there, the super doesn't really do a ton of damage, but the fusion rifle just is, is rattling them. Maybe he had more health left than I remember. Thought he had like was really low. But he doesn't seem like he's going to be really low. Oh, he's got more health left than I thought. Now, in this third phase, this is where the crazy thing's going to happen. At one, some point during this next phase, no knights or adds are going to appear. <laughs> and I don't know why that happened. Right? So, I've never seen it before. And I've got quite a few clears of this dungeon. I've never seen it where the adds don't appear. Now, they eventually, obviously do, because we finished the run. I'm actually quite surprised. I thought I thought he had less damage than that. But uh a less health, sorry. But it's still not a lot. If I if I hadn't missed those couple of shots where he was like throwing that are just like uncharged, I maybe could have got him. The other thing is the threaded needle, you want you want a Vorpo autoloading hoax. I don't have the autoloading, I've got I've got Vorpo and Rangefinder. So whereas I'm getting extra range, I would take that autoloading hoax at any day of the week. But yeah, I'm, I'm going to kill a set of the knights and I'm going to kill all the adds and then no adds are going to appear. It's when there's one boss left and the one boss doesn't even shoot at me. And I, the only thing I can put that down to is the fact that Bungie had, were doing the the server update or whatever. Because I've never seen that before. It was, I actually, and I'm pretty sure most of you guys would have been the same. I was like, oh my god, I can't believe that... Uh, doing this run it's messed me up you know first time because this literally was my first run uh on the warlock uh so in this room i'm trying to find oh there's the dark moats over there it's all dark which is great bungie loves to do stuff like this it's really good because this is what i call the light room because there's so much light in here I'll just put my rift down because i know there's a ton of ads around and then I'm just going to eat my grenade. Now we've got dark here, so... There we go. Go on. Now we're going to get these ads. And then my moats just disappeared into nowhere. But I've still got... I've still got one, uh, three dark moats. Now, as you can see, and, and, and I don't know if it transpires that way to you guys, but it seems pretty weird to me that uh, I'm picking up moat, these. I picked out the light moats, and I've got light moats, because now I'm, like, all over the place. I'm not. I just lost, lost the... I'm supposed to get dark moats. So now I've realized, oh, no, it was dark. Now I'll get the dark, which when you when you when you pick up a different 
shade of light. Uh, it just it just cancels the shade you've got. So here we go. One slam here. Take out this this uh, ogre. Put down a a rift. There we go. I've got devour propped now. And now we can just melt away at my leisure. As I say, it's not a big deal if you do produce the wrong motes. You don't you don't want to, obviously, but it's not the end of the world if you do, because the ads are kind of, you know, the, the chance to get knights is infinite. So here we go. There's the dark. And now where are the ads? <laughs> no ads. We should have been getting knights at least by now. And even the boss isn't shooting at me. I've never seen this before. So I'm just... Now I'm like, what do I do? I don't actually know if this runs... A, you know, if this is a bust. But uh, I decided... Because it was such a good... You know, come in, first run. Wasn't even really thinking about it. Look, he was like he shook his head at me saying, nope. Then the ads came in. And then a knight is just randomly there. So now what I'm going to do, I've lost my dark moat, so obviously I've got, I've got Devour, so I'm just going to kill this knight, pick up the, the moats, get into a little corner. This is a great place in here for, for uh, producing moats when they actually give you the shade that you were standing in. So... I'll just run around here, make sure, yep, I'm in the dark. And there we go. Now, because the boss hasn't got a lot, I was expecting to, like, clear him pretty quickly. I always take the ogre out as well. I never used to. Sometimes I wouldn't. I don't have any fusion rifle ammo. I'll put the bear on because he's hitting me. And just hitting with some weather horror because I'm going to have to kill these ads because I, I don't have any fusion rifle ad ammo. I can see some special over there. And hopefully these ads produce a bit more. I think they do. I'll pick this up and see if there's any more because well the problem is when you're running two specials, and it's not really it's not a problem, it's my own fault for running two specials. Uh you share whatever ammo you get between both weapons. Seven's enough. Because I've got quite a bit of heavy and I was thinking, well, it hasn't actually got a lot a lot of health left. So I still kind of took my time. I'm still annoyed at how long it took me. I actually went across all the platforms with that amount of health. So uh, one thing I haven't really spoke about is, and, and I'm not going to speak about it in this video. I have got something else planned. We're talking about this season's kind of uh, meta and what it kind of means for the future of Destiny. Because everybody else loves this meta and, and, and I, I really don't. Not really the biggest fan of it, but uh, o only because I've noticed a trend in the Destiny metas, and that's what we're going to speak about. So as you can see there, I'm just kind of, I'm just plugging away. I'm not. I actually stayed really far back, and I noticed I did here, which is why I went a little bit further forward because I'm I'm at times eight, so I kind of gave up DPS on the boss. And just thought, right, I'll just go to the other side. Still cool. It's no problem. I knew I was going to get him, obviously. Look at the health he's got. If I'd have stuck a Wither Horde to him, that would have probably killed him by the time I got over here. But with the Warlock, you do actually... You can actually be... See, I knew I was going to get him. It was no problem. You can actually be a little bit more relaxed. Because the biggest issue... And the whole of this dungeon is survivability. There's a lot that comes at you from real close quarters. So survivability has to be your first and foremost uh, responsibility. And the Warlock has that in spades with, obviously, Devour. And that's the run, guys. Uh, I hope you've picked up stuff from this. I hope you enjoyed the run. I hope you maybe learnt a few things about it. Thanks a lot to everybody that supported the Hunter Run. I hope you guys all turn out for this. And I hope you enjoy it the same. And until the next video, guys, you all stay safe. And I will speak to you then.